Hi, I'm Blake Lively, and this is everything I did in a day on the set of the rhythm section. I play Stephanie Patrick, but I'm also known as Lisa, but also known as Petra, and that's what happens in like an assassin spy movie. You have so many different identities, and who is she really? From the time I signed on to the movie, just after I had um, my second baby, so um, I had eight months to, to get in just like, you know, pretty crazy shape, and that was rock climbing, and it was defensive driving training, and exercising, and swimming, and just like, I don't even, I don't know, I just eat donuts now, I can't remember that block it all out. So on an average day on set, I probably woke up at 5 a.m., but mostly because I was doing mama duty with my girls, have breakfast with them, hang out with them, work out with them, because I didn't want to wake up any earlier. I'm not Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I had to just get some sleep. So I would actually wake up and work out with my girls. So I would sort of use them as, as weights. Instead of wearing a weight vest, I got to wear my children. So after working out, I would eat some sort of steamed spinachy, something healthy with like a poached egg, but I would always have these cookies. Um, there's a book called Sweet Paleo, and she makes these vegan chocolate chip cookies, and they're amazing. And then in the car ride on the way to set, uh, I was working with my dialect coach, a gentleman who was driving the car. I was British, I was terrified to practice my British accent while he was listening to me, so I'd make them blast the music, so it's like, Britney Spears glaring in the front while I'm doing a strange British accent in the back. So we would go through the scene, but then we would also just talk to each other in a British accent. She'd make me tell her stories of my childhood, but it was very weird to like talk about Arby's in a British accent. It does, those two don't really drive together. So we filmed this movie in Ireland, Madrid, Cadiz, Almeria. Basically anywhere they shoot Game of Thrones is where we shot this movie. And then when we would go down the hill in Ireland, I'd blast the Game of Thrones main titles because we were shooting there and half of our crew was the Game of Thrones crew. And spoiler alert, I kill the Night King in this movie. Actually the Night King, I get to kill him. So the car ride from wherever I am to set is anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour. All of this would, would happen usually before 7 a.m. I'd get to set, sit down in hair and makeup. I really didn't want to cut my hair, but I was wearing wigs, basically pixie cut wigs. So this amazing hairdresser would have to wrap all of my hair into this tiny wig wrap. I had prosthetics certain day. I had like these prosthetic eye bags. They would have waited a few years. They wouldn't even had to have had the prosthetics. We could have just shot right now. It would be perfect. So Vivian Baker, who's amazing. She's actually nominated for an Oscar this year for Bombshell. She's incredible. She could do my eye bags in 15 minutes, which is really amazing. And then the wig probably took 45 minutes. And then there was just a ton of detail work that they would paint on me from, you know, cuts and scrapes to bruises to, I like, got a really bad hand injury on the set. So we actually had to sustain the injury for the whole production. They'd have to paint on bruises and blood every day which is a really surreal experience. So when I was in hair and makeup, I was usually asking the hairstylist, Sam, to speak to me um, or to say my words in a British accent. Because I noticed that with dialect coaches, um, no matter how good they are, they sort of speak more beautifully <laughs> than, than normal people. So I would always cross check all my lines with her, just having her say it more casually and naturally, making our poor hairdresser be a, a secondary dialect coach for me. It was when Taylor Swift's Reputation album came out. So there was a lot of that blasting at all times. After hair and makeup, go into wardrobe. I, we, where we were shooting was so freezing that I had just so many layers of wardrobe. It was insane and heat packs. Oftentimes I'd have to take off my clothes again because I'd get to set in Jude Law and I would be wearing the same outfit. Um, true story, so many times, we probably changed like six times. We're both in like a very similar green sweater and like brown corduroys or green corduroys. It was, it was, uh, never had that experience before. And at this point we're probably at 8 a.m., 8.15 a.m. We usually um, oftentimes get to rehearse. Uh, there were a lot of oneers on this movie, so when you shoot an entire scene in one take, it was tricky to get the choreography of, of the, the one take. So rehearsal sometimes would take an hour if it was a day where we were shooting something that was, um, that was a oneer, and then we shoot. When you do one take, you're shooting one take all day long. So the car chase was one take, but we shot it for almost for a week. What's special about this car chase, and I've never seen it in a movie before, you're in the car with me the entire time. So you are trapped, you're experiencing it as I am, rather than all these shots where you're seeing this cool driving. So it's really intense and scary, and our DP was trapped in the car with me. Our focus puller, who's making sure it stays in focus, is basically in like a luge situation, but he's strapped and he's in the trunk. He looks like a hostage but he's there trying to pull focus while we're driving pretty, pretty nutty. So fight choreography was really exciting for me because 
who doesn't want to have the ability to kick someone's ass if you need to? Um, if you need to, there is a fight that's one shot, which is especially tricky because you have to get the choreography exactly right and go hard enough where you're actually hurting each other a little, but not too much. And it's two actors. You can't switch out with stunt doubles when it's one taken two actors. So Jude and I did that together, which is where I hurt my hand. We shot something we call French hours, which is when you shoot a continuous day so you don't take any lunch breaks. The reason you shoot French hours and you don't break for lunch is because when you're dependent on the daylight, you have to shoot through the day. So we shot from probably 8 a.m. until it was dark. Well, until I was rushed to the hospital. And then we were even shooting in a location that the bathroom was far away. So it was just sort of like a thing where all the crew members and cast, we'd sort of like sneak off into the bushes and you would know just to like give them their time because you knew what was happening. It's a little bit like a dog park in that, like everybody knew where everyone else pissed. Um, that was the set. I'd say we'd probably wrap around 8, 8 to 9 p.m. each night, 8 o'clock maybe, and then hour drive home. Normally I would be eating in the car on the ride home, just like whatever. And then um, my kids, I, I, they don't ever go to sleep, honestly. We gotta invent something. My kids had like a pack and play, almost like a crib, and I would crawl in there and sing them to sleep. And usually I'd fall asleep in there, almost every single night I'd fall asleep in there. And then my husband would usually come in and be like, hey, you're safe now. And then I would, you know, come to bed. At the end of the day, I was very, very exhausted. But it's okay, because we only shot it for eight months, so it's fine. The author of the book also wrote the script. Um, so while I read the book, um, we went such a different direction with the movie by making it very grounded. As an actor, it was one of the most rewarding movies I've ever done, because the idea is, what would you do if you were in the scenario? And so it's terrifying in every moment, because you can really put yourself in that scenario and say, like, if this were me, what would I do? We're James Bond, he's got it, he's good. But, you know, it's, it's kind of fun to see a real person in that world.